Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to the stream of the Fitbash IM3. Um, if you'd like to ask a question to our speaker, you can do this uh, by using the chat functionality below the streaming function here. So, the next speaker here is Alexi Roussel, uh, former president of the Swiss Pirate Party. I'm proud to have you here today. Um, he will speak today about the digital integrity of the human person and new fundamental rights 2020 update. So the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, you did, I did a presentation in English. Uh, I was authorized to do so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, uh, I'm working since uh, several years on, on this uh, right to digital integrity of the human person and uh, uh, there is, has been a lot of ev evolution um, uh, during the last, uh, the last year and uh, I already presented uh, one year ago um, at the, in Leipzig and uh, so now I'm doing uh, like every year uh, an update on, on the, new ch the changes which are coming. But first, uh, I'm going to present again what the what this right is about, and uh, go into some of the uh, details, and then uh, see what are the, the updates of, of this year and what hopefully we can expect next year. Um, so uh, first, uh, this is a right that people didn't hear much uh, already. I mean, until now, it's going uh, in Switzerland. It's being used more and more. The, the term terminology is being used, and there are some real cases. Uh, of uh, constitu uh, co some constitutions are trying to uh, to get this right uh, into um, uh, into some of the local constitutions. So, um, but basically, it all comes down from this uh, this key moment, which uh, Peter Sunde summarized very well. Um, when the judge when the judge asked Peter Sunde during the tri the Pirate Bay uh, trial um, if he meets people uh, in real life. Uh, in s and then he answers, no, we don't use the expression in real life because uh, we use the expression away from keyboard because for us, internet is real and basically internet is a continuity. This small expression is a very old expression in our world and it's, it shows that um, there is a change of perception between uh, the old world where you have people uh, and for example, Angela Merkel and, her, and, and they see the new world with the Neuland and then there is the uh, people uh, today, most of the people who live in a continuity with the digital space. They don't see the difference. So there is a lot of search for a uh, core digital human right. Uh, that's, um, and, and the objective of this core digital human right is to, of, of course, protect and give us some guidelines on how to, uh, uh, to ensure uh, that people are safe in the digital space also, but it has to be uh, understood and enforceable by, by everyone. It has to be something very simple. So here the concept is um, very simple. There is uh, next to the physical and mental integrity uh, of a human person, there is also a digital integrity of the human person. Uh, why do we have first uh, um, the integrity why does it exist? So in, in German, it's, it's uh, uh, called Unversehrtheit. Uh, why does it exist and why it is put in constitutions at a very high level in the constitution? It's because it's the only way to guarantee the autonomy and the freedom of, of the person. Basically, if you allow one person to be safe, to be protected physically, then you can ensure that this person is going to take uh, decisions without physical constraints. Uh, very simple, if you go to the voting booth and you want to vote, and if someone is hitting you at the same time, you will not vote the same way that if you, if you are not hit. So this is very, it looks very simple, but uh, I, I believe we can also apply the same type of guarantee in the digital world. So there has been already a movement 
which says that is uh, that that want to protect uh, digital self determination, and this is exactly this: Dig digital self determination is a, uh, a way to um, is is a, um, a way to recognize that also in the digital space, people need to be autonomous, needs to be free in their uh, capacity of taking this decision, and um, and for this they have to be. Uh, uh, the, their entity, the person, has to be protected. So I see the, uh, the, the right to digital integrity to guarantee this right to, uh, to self-determination. So the um, right to self-determination exists already since some years. It has been actually also uh, established by the, or the establishment maybe uh, recognized by the, the uh, German High Court. Uh, and in 2008, but uh, it is recognized that uh, in uh, by some scholars in, in Switzerland that inside the constitutions um, today we consider that this right of self uh, self bestimmung is present in Article 13, which is about uh, data protection, but it's not very rightly implemented. It's a bit hard to uh, understand it from there because the text says. You are only protected against the abuses. This is very specific, and um, it's very hard to um, enforce informational selbstbestimmung or digital self-determination based on the current article in the Constitution. So that's why there is a, another article which is higher up in the in the Constitution, with, which is the right of life. And the right of life is actually is Article 10 in the Swiss Constitution. And it's the article which is the most important because it's the first article that provides you a space, you as a human being, in the society with the state uh, saying that it's, not going to, uh, it's going to protect your life and it's going to give you the space to be uh, a, a, an active citizen, an active person. And, and without this right of life, then you don't have any other rights. All the other rights that you have which is the right of uh, movement, uh, the right of free speech, the right of privacy, any other right is derived from this right to life. It has a very long history, but um, basically it has been written down quite uh, recently. So um, the right of life is usually uh, combined with two specific rights, which is the right to your physical integrity and the right to your mental integrity. Um, these are these are these are put uh, usually in in the in the in the constitution. Some constitutions only have one. Some constitutions don't have any of those two. They only have the right to life. But the right to life is like really present everywhere. So now that we have our life, which has been digitally extended, we also could consider that our right to fit our our right to our integrity of ourselves should be extended also. But uh, it, it raises some questions and it, or it has some, some consequences, actually. And one of the first consequences, which, which is the, um, it has already been established by, by some groups. Um, uh, and one of the groups is, is called the AFA PDP. It's, it's an association of uh, French speaking uh, data protection officers uh, or uh, uh, organization uh, like uh, CNIL in France like uh, the uh, EDUB in Switzerland uh, and, uh, and many other countries. They came together and they made a s political statement in, in 2018 saying that uh, personal data are not an object that you can buy and sell. It is actually part of the human person. It's part of your personhood. And so it has uh, specific rights uh, which are inalienable. So you cannot remove those rights from your data. And, um, uh, and these rights cannot be sold also, okay? Can, you know, cannot be transferred because they're inalienable. So here, um, when, we, when we talk about the integrity of the person, of course, if we talk about the physical integrity, it's pretty easy to understand. We have a body and no one is allowed to chop my arm uh, without any reason. Um, but for the digital space, it's a bit different because what is my digital self in the digital realm? So it is actually my, my data, uh, but it's not very well defined exactly. Uh, there are some studies about all the different types of data that we have. Uh, but then um, 
it's uh, it's uh, it's more like a very large uh, uh, concept. Saying now these data, they are not objects that you can buy and sell, like uh, in the U.S. They have this uh, Silicon Way uh, approach where they can just buy data, resell it, uh, you reuse it against the person. Uh, or there is the Chinese or the Russian approach, which is more like uh, data is part of the common good. Your, your data, your personal data, is actually not owned by yourself, but it's owned by the society, and then can be used against you for the good of the society. Uh, and this is what we see in China or in, in Russia. So here the idea is that the data are part of yourself, and that's why we can say then that the government, that the state, through the constitution, should protect the integrity of these data and should not interfere with those as long as it affects your autonomy, your capacity of taking decision. Uh, one very good example is Cambridge Analytica, where uh, uh, organization used personal data and inf interfered in the uh, information bubble to change your way, sub to change the way of some people of how they would feel and then to make them vote a certain way. So this is clearly a manipulation of their um, personhood, digital personhood, and that affected their in digital integrity and it affected their vote. Um, so from there, um, one of my uh, considerations is that just harvesting data, if, if you are starting to get data over people uh, without uh, them being uh, uh, informed and in a cons uh, and have given consent, um, then basically this is already harming the digital integrity of the person. So uh, the fact that you have third parties that are collecting data without you having inter uh, an interaction with them, uh, with it could be a state organization or could be a private organization, but this is already not acceptable uh, without you having given an, uh, uh, a consent. Um, and and also the the, the last uh, consequence that that is important is that the uh, it has it comes with a realization that actually no one knows or no one no one understands the extent of his personal data, and this is very important because one of the critics of current uh, um, uh, one of the the critics of people who want to fight for their 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 digital rights is. Oh, but you just have to um, be responsible and don't put things on Facebook if you don't um, if you don't want your data to be leaked. Just don't put your data there, at the first place. Uh, obviously, this is a, a very bad understanding of how internet is working. So you can argue yes, but you don't know what metadata is, and you can you don't understand what what are the consequences. It's not just about my post on Facebook. It's the fact that my friends are using my data all over Facebook which I, I, I don't control. But the reality is, is actually bigger, is that no one has full knowledge and full comprehension of the extent of his personal data. That's, not in, that's just impossible to have. So the whole system must be made uh, taking this into account. We should be protected wherever the, our data is, even if we are not aware that the data is somewhere. And, uh, and in Switzerland, this is like really the case right now, where if you want to... Um, uh, enforce your right, your right to data access, your right to uh, data deletion, and so on. You really need to know where they, where they are, and you need to act precisely. Uh, and this this is this is really limitative. So so the the, the so breaking the the nothing to hide logic. Huh? Nothing to if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry. Um, I think that what that is a, a key thing that was always struggling uh, before uh, this right came is that um, a lot of people put digital right in the framework of privacy. So privacy is a, is a way to, um, to 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 live a life on your protected, you know, uh, and um, the enforcing your digital rights is actually not only about uh, having making sure that you can hide away and have a private life. It's just actually a way to make you uh, to keep, make yourself be able to take freely decision also uh, in the digital realm. So when you when we talk about digital integrity, it opens up, uh, it breaks this logic of um, uh, putting people who are fighting for digital rights 
just in a place where uh, we suspect them to hide something. Yeah? And that's not the case. Actually, we don't, most of us, we don't hide anything and we have like normal boring life like uh, everyone. Uh, but just we want to keep our autonomy and then when we, we, do, we don't want to, to have, uh, to see algorithm influence our, our own decision making, for example, that's one example. Um, so, uh, digital integrity and, and GDPR. This is a, a question I, I, I get often. Is it uh, compatible? Is it not? Not is it incompatible? Uh, it's a very good uh, example that uh, every every time you make a a big statement, a big uh, f um, fundamental right, you need to have laws which come and implement uh, specifics. Uh, and GDPR is exactly this. GDPR is a is a big law which is is implementing specifics about how data has to be uh, managed, and, and most of it is actually uh, not bad. Uh, but it has a and so it's a good complement uh, to to the to the main principle. Um, but the problem is that uh, it is incompatible within its Article Two. And the Article 2 of, uh, of the GDPR is what, what I call the, the security black hole. It's basically that as soon as a state says that there is a kind of security concern around um, the situation, then they can uh, collect data for no reason. I mean, they don't have to justify and they can uh, avoid, uh, they can be ex excluded from GDPR and just collect all the data they want. So this has to be removed. Uh, with time, it has to be has has been already reduced a bit by Conventions 108 from the uh, Council of Europe, but but basically uh, the idea is that um, every uh, I if we have a right to digital integrity, then this right is is actually imp it, it imposes itself on the state. So the state should give should give the example. That's that. This is why we need a, a right to digital integrity. The right to digital integrity is basically uh, asking the state to treat his digital citizens the right way, as free, responsible person uh, who can take their own decisions, and they should provide the right tools to the, the citizens to, to be able to, to have this life uh, and, um, uh, and to defend their, their digital autonomy. So uh, states should be an example. And today, what we see is that states are not examples. They are uh, establishing mass surveillance, even though they are in democracies. Uh, they are working. Um, uh, they, they are they are they are working with uh, private sector uh, companies like Palantir, for example, uh, uh, which uh, are collecting data and they they have the creating systems very connected systems between different governments and uh, private companies and they create they create a system which is called today uh, uh, capitalism of server or server surveillance so the state should be actually uh, on the side of the citizen and be able to let the the citizen protect its own uh, autonomy it is its individual autonomy so at the end the right of digital integrity is should be uh, I hope, or can be in the future, the justification for the rate for the right to data protection as a whole. So, uh, data protection is only seen as one element to allow people, also in the digital sphere, to be autonomous. So now, how are we going to implement this? And this is what we what's the most interesting is that uh, one, once we have the right, we need to put it somewhere. And, uh, and actually, there is um, uh, so there's two main texts which are, are proposed. So it's the Charter of Fundamental Right of the European Union and the Swiss Constitution. So, I mean, those are the two ones which I have a, somehow I can I can uh, work on. Um, so they have a, a similar article, uh, Article 3.1 uh, and Article 10.2. Uh, which says for the Swiss one, it says every person has a right to personal liberty and in particular to physical and mental integrity and to freedom of movement. So the idea here is very simple, is to um, embrace actually our digital society and accept that today um, we are only social human beings because we also interact digitally, not, uh, only, not, not only uh, physically. So we add the digital part of ourself um, in these articles. So, so for example, the Charter of Fundamental Rights could become 
everyone has the right to the respect of his and her physical, mental, and digital integrity. So, from there, um, some work has started. It started s very slowly a couple of years ago. Uh, it's a long process, which has started 10 years ago, but uh, in Switzerland, we already have uh, three work which are in progress. And the first one is in uh, Valle. Uh, it's, uh, it's a, these are state levels, so constitution, cantonal levels, uh, for people who are not in Switzerland. So these are where it's a federation, so every canton has its own constitutions. And they have, for some, uh, a, uh, a collection of fundamental rights which is included in their own constitution, so they can add them. So Valle uh, has one specific um, uh, is in one specific moment right now, right now, because they are renewing their own constitutions. So they're re rewriting it from scratch, and um, and and uh, the they have a, a whole assembly for this that they they voted, and there is a commission on uh, fundamental right that has added this right to digital integrity as a separate line, but in the same paragraph as the, in the right of life. And um, that should be, uh, that, that is in discussion right now. And we'll just come a bit later on what it triggered. It's very interesting. Uh, Canton of Geneva has also started some, um, uh, some work. Uh, one of the main local parties uh, has decided to make a, um, an initiative to collect signature, but because of coronavirus, uh, collecting signatures in the middle of the pandemic is not a very right, <laughs> very easy task. So they, they sadly decided to cancel it. But they're going to submit a constitutional law. So that's a whole uh, parliamentar par parliamentarian uh, process uh, within the um, w uh, within the Geneva institution, so that it can go through without uh, a people vote. But there there will be referendum, but there won't be a, there won't be an initiative. Okay. Uh, Canton Neuf Neuchâtel, where, where I am, uh, there is some work that is, is being prepared also for the, in, in that way. Um, so the debate of uh, in, in Valis, and it, that was interesting, you can find the documentation on, the, on their website. Um, I put the link there. It's in French and in German. But basically, they, they, um, uh, my message to them was really, okay, there is this right to digital integrity, and, and you should try to add this. And they, they really listened to that, and they took it. Um, and they, 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 they put it, and unanimously they added, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, this commission, it's not voted, huh? it has to still to be voted by the people of, uh, of Valis, and there's a lot of process still, but the commission on fund fundamental right, they accepted to uh, add this right to digital integrity. But they came up with other rights, and that's really interesting, because they, they tried out several ones. One of them is uh, every person has the right to control its digital identity. And I think uh, in, the, in the context of the EID uh, law, it's, it's pretty interesting how, how, it, um, how it came up. So they, they put that because they first put the, the, the right to digital in integrity. And then so, so when they talk about digital identity, then they said, yeah, everyone should be in control. And, and in control is very important because it means, uh, it means that the way you treat third parties is very uh, specific, has to be very specific. We have to define that. Uh, but also, it added in the same line, it says it has a special right to anonymity within the digital realm. I think that's very interesting, uh, a right. So that would, that's the first occurrence where there's a proposition of the right of anonymity. Um, there is another right that was proposed but refused by the Commission, so there was a minority report, minority report on this uh, right, is that there was a right to not, not to be surveilled, measured, or, or analyzed, but for some reason, uh, which um, was not completely, um, they thought it was a bit too much maybe uh, to, to do this. And the third thing is also um, linked to the right to be disconnected, which is also interesting. Every person is allowed to communicate with authorities without using any specific technology. And this is a trend we see right now where a government are pushing people to the digital connection and it's actually letting a lot of people out and, uh, and, and or maybe some people are using those tools but basically are, are losing the control over those tools that they're using and they're losing the, the control in their relationship with their own state. So if you try to um, have a state that creates confidence with their citizen, uh, but you give them tools that they don't understand, 
uh, right now because they don't have the education, because they don't have control over the tools. That's not going to increase the, uh, the overall uh, uh, conf confidence in the state. So it's, it's actually uh, not um, going in the other, right, the other direction. And, and basically when you think about that every person has a uh, right to digital integrity, then you think about these, these, uh, these things. Um, we added this year, we added a Wikipedia article in French, uh, which the, the link is, is, uh, is on the screen. Um, it was really an interesting exercise that we, that we did here. It's a very simple uh, article which goes through a bit uh, the situation in Switzerland. And um, uh, the, 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 mo the best lesson that we, that we learned from this is that as soon as there's a Wikipedia page, then it's, it's a real thing. Um, the uh, because people, the first thing they will do if you talk about something, they will go on internet and they will they, they will search the topic and they will see the first link is a Wikipedia page. Ah, okay, so they 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 talk about something which is which is right. Uh, I just made one mistake which I didn't know at that time is that we should never use like uh, uh, parentheses at the end of a link. Uh, it, it really is very bad for sharing the link. Uh, but anyway. So the Wikipedia page uh, got some interest, and there's already some other external uh, editors uh, on this uh, article, which is interesting. Um, this year, and it's just like uh, released a uh, few days ago, uh, we have the first uh, publication. So in in uh, beginning of the year uh, 2020, there was a, um, uh, uh, a one-day coll colloquium at the University of Law of Neuchâtel about the topic. And um, uh, I was presenting, someone from the uh, Valais Constitution was presenting, and then all the teacher professors from, the, from key um, um, elements like constitutional law, uh, criminal law, uh, civil law, international civil law, they all presented and they made their own analysis of this, um, of this new uh, right. So, uh, and, and now we have this... Uh, uh, booklet, which uh, uh, it's actually a book, uh, with the contribution of all these authors uh, that has been um, uh, uh, published a couple of weeks ago. So that's the first legal public publication. It's important because now people can start referencing this um, uh, this this um, this rights or and um, put references in their own work and uh, and start to use this as doctrine. So this is a doctrinal work that we've been doing. Um, I've been presenting this uh, in uh, uh, going around. Uh, so I was last year in the, at the CCC also. I was at the Winter Congress, and uh, uh, we recently pre presented it also at the Internet Governance Forum, which is a is, is a good place to uh, to have um, uh, uh, out, uh, outreach. Um, Two, um, these are older achievements, but uh, I'm, I'm still putting them there because they're, they're quite interesting, is that um, uh, SWICO is an association for, uh, in Switzerland about digital, the, the digital uh, world, and they made, a, um, they made a survey in 2019 uh, for, uh, the, um, for all the candidates of the national elections of 2019. And there was a question, we were able to add this question in the, in the survey. Where there was, where they were asked, "What do you think about a right to digital integrity?" Um, and there was a very high support. So even though people, even though it was not a topic at that moment, and uh, maybe they, 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 when they saw the question, they f felt naturally that it was a good thing. Um, the Greens in Switzerland voted. Uh, they, 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 um, they agreed up to 99 percent or 95 percent. And uh, SVP, which is like the most conservative, let's say, uh, they they agreed up uh, at 55 percent, which is not bad actually. Uh, the, the Swiss so Socialist Party is also um, uh, has has made in 2015, so that was a long time ago, uh, a paper on on internet, a position on the internet, uh, and they, they they did it in a way which is pretty interesting. You have the uh, you have there's the link also there on the screen. Um, they, uh, they really made a work and they involved a lot of people from uh, experts and the community to try to see, find a way to define what is socialism in the age of internet and uh, how their view should be on, on, uh, on, 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 yeah, on the internet. And um, 
they also integrated, uh, after a proposition that we made, they also integrated the right to digital integrity. And they, they really made it in a way that it's linked to the right to self-determination. So this is how they see it very well. Uh, they understood. So the, in terms of future work, this year there will be a few things happening. So first there is a, um, an essay which is going to be published also. So this is more like a, a, a political book. Um, publication uh, that will be published in April, uh, which is explaining a bit the, the thinking about this. So it's not legal work like the first one, which is more uh, uh, legal uh, analysis and legal critiques. But this is really like a digital, uh, um, an essay uh, and, and thinking, wishful thinking about how it could, it could uh, uh, have an impact on the society. There's a lot of uh, legal research that is going to start in Neuchâtel University. There is even a new um, um, laboratory uh, in, the law, in the law university about the tech, and, um, and, and they're going to take this uh, subject too. Hopefully we are going to, uh, to have some initiatives. So I'm just going to, to, to finalize now with the last thing is that, okay, some people say, yeah, great, Alexi, uh, I like this and, and I want to help somehow. Um, and, and the idea is actually uh, the, the first thing that we have to do is keep on building the things that we are building right now, actually, uh, that, that protects our digital integrity. So everything which is uh, based on an anonymization, all the decentralized tools, all, the, all, the, um, all those new tools that we are thriving, uh, we are working with and we are thriving in, uh, these we need to, uh, to keep building and we can just add this little touch that does it does it protect um, my digital integrity yes or no uh, myself i'm working on the um, uh, i'm helping people to build an anonymization network and that's exactly in line with 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 my thinking um, of course then then we can also uh, in the whenever uh, and i hope the next time that the digital gesellschaft has a has a successful um, uh, judicial process, they can ask the question, okay, in this case, did we uh, hurt the digital, digital integrity of the, of the people? It's something that you can take into uh, a legal procedure and ask this question. Now that there is some doctrine, people, the judges can go and, and, uh, and be uh, um, questioned about this. Uh, yeah, basically. And of course, uh, you can also always express yourself and, and use this term um, by saying, instead of saying, no, I want to be private, I don't want to, people to see me, uh, to see my private information on, on my social network, you can say to people who don't understand, who are still in the, in the thematic of saying, oh, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about. You can say, yeah, but it does affect my digital in integrity. It does affect my way I can take a decision. So it's a different language that you can, you can propose to, uh, to, to this. Uh, and obviously, if you want to help uh, support initiatives, local initiatives uh, in Switzerland, if you're if you're in Switzerland, there's a lot of cantons where you can easily make a local initiative, uh, support them financially, or actually help them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Alexis, very, very much for uh, your talk and also for your engagement here in this area. Uh, very interesting. So. I'm a little bit lost now, so kind of used and we have a problem. Um, the channel, the IRC channel is um, not working, at least not for me. So, but I have I have two questions. So the first is probably, a, or maybe a bit an easier one. So um, it looks to me that in the French part of Switzerland, um, this initiative is way further in progress. So is this just by chance or is it because you're more active there or is it because people are more open-minded to this kind of topic? Or? Um, so so I've been more active and, and I had the chance to, to really engage with uh, um, scholars in the University of uh, Lausanne, in the uh, of Neuchâtel, in the University of uh, Geneva. Uh, so it has been picked up from there. And, um, and because it has been picked up by scholars, then it had echo in the, at the constitutional uh, hearings in Valais and in uh, Geneva. So uh, yeah, it was, it was mostly due to the fact that um, one of the reasons I was there more active, so it could spread. And, but now it's spreading on its own. Uh, yeah. 
So I have to do the same thing in the, the Swiss German part. Maybe we can support you there. <laughs> um, so the second thing which came to my mind is um, when you were talking more at the beginning of the talk, um, where you were mentioning also, uh, for example, Cambridge Analytica or all this kind of thing, yeah. where you also saying um, when such tools are are um, starting to influence your political or generally your mind, um, that's also violating your uh, digital integrity. Yes. But on the other hand, um, even in the non-digital world, so you, we, we have advertising also for political things on the streets, and then it's of course not, or at least to me, of course, not a violation of digital integrity. But um, so the question would then be, where would you see here the border? Yeah. I mean, when would you call it as a, a violation of the dig digital integrity? And where would you say it's kind of normal ad or even part of the healthy political, dis political discussion which are needed uh, in a democracy? So it's all a matter of balance, okay? Uh, for example, in the, in the physical world, you have propaganda, you have adv political adv advertisement. But, for example, you're not allowed to have subliminal messages, like in the movies, you know, like where they put one uh, frame and to, to change your mind. So, so it is already accepted and that uh, you can put uh, political posters in the street, but you cannot do subliminal messages. So you see that that's one example where the society made some decisions. Um, and I think it will be the same for uh, online political uh, publicity. Um, if it's something which is um, outspoken, which is presented, and it's it's known to be uh, political uh, publicity, um, that's probably something that the society will think it's okay. Uh, what what is not okay in, is when the the people are not aware of the functioning of the algorithm, and that the people are using those tools, knowing that the people don't understand, and are pushing data um, to change their mindset. Uh, this is different because then you don't have the tools to fight yourself against that because you're inside your bubble and you think that you're seeing the, the reality and in, in, re in, in fact the reality is induced by some political messages that you, that you are seeing. So I think that's way over the limits that the society should accept. Okay? Uh, now we should need to find the right balance um, and the balance will be always at if does a normal person who is uh, uh, not stupid enough, uh, strong, I is it uh, uh, facing that kind of publicity? Will he be strong or he or she be strong enough to understand what it what it is and still to take his own decision? You know, that that will be the the, the balance. All right, since I still have no access to the IRC channel, uh, we'd like to thank you again for the talk and for answering at least my question. Thank you very much. And also thank you for everyone who was tuning in. So we are having now a break until eight o'clock Swiss time. So that's almost one hour. And then the next talk will be about bioinformatics hacking. Thank you.